Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a game prototype in Figma. So now using the interactive components feature, it has become so easy to create simple 2D game animations. So obviously Figma is not for game development and you can't create a real game in this, but you can actually create the interactions and all the game moment and all that stuff before you give it to the game developer and also show it to your stakeholders to get an approval or any changes or feedback on it. So that's going to be definitely helpful using this new feature. So I've tried to create three game prototypes. So without any further ado, let's have have a demo of it and then we can get started. So starting off with the first one which is Tic-Tac-Toe and this is a very popular game and many people have already created this using the interactive components feature in Figma. In fact Figma team themselves have created a version of this and put it in the playground file. However what I've created here has a bit of a different interaction. So the one that Figma created you actually have to click on a cell and then you have two options which is X and O and then you have to choose. So there are two interactions being involved but in this one I try to use a timer to have a slightly different interaction. So let's quickly see how this works. So initially you have this home screen and the user has to pick uh, which one they want to go with first X or O so I'll go with X here and then you have a small timer and then you have which players turn so I click on a cell here you have X then it's player 2 again with 5 seconds and when I click it goes to O and then again player 1 your timer is done player 2 your timer is done and so on, you get it right. So basically instead of two clicks, uh, what I'm doing here is just with a single click and I'm handling with a delay or a timer to change the player's turn. So that's the first one we are gonna see. Moving on to the second game, which is Flappy Bird. And this is a quite popular game, which went viral a couple of years ago. So you can also create such simple 2D animation games. So starting off with this one, uh, you just need to tap and then I'm using the space bar, you know, to activate the flying here. So once I press on space bar, the bird goes up and once I leave it, it goes down. And then you can show the game over and you can actually have the score timer and all how I did in the tic-tac-toe game. And finally moving on to the last one, which I really like, this is car racing game. I have a small intro created here, like that's the intro. And once it's done, you can just click on start. And then you just need to use the right and the left key. So as you can see, I'm just using the right and the left arrow on the keyboard. And you have this cool uh, interaction and then the game over. You can also have the scorecard and all that stuff. But overall, this is just to showcase how you want the interaction to be like before you actually build the game. So you can show it to your stakeholders and get approval and do some changes and all that stuff. So it's really good to have a game prototype like this using Figma. So without any further ado, let's get started and see how to create this. So here we are on the tic-tac-toe file and we are not going to create everything from scratch because this video would get really long as I have to cover three games here. So I'll be just running through the file that I already created and explain you what all are the steps I did to create these games. Games. So as you can see in the tic-tac-toe file, all this game is running with just uh, three screens as you can see here. The first one is a home screen which basically doesn't have any interactive components. This is just uh, basic layers and in this screen is where you have the interactive components. So starting off with the most uh, basic one which is the timer and the player turn. So that is done here. So these are the interactive components. So in case of a timer, as you can see, I'm just using this timer interactive component. And in this one, I just have this last digit which is being animated or changed position and that is how you are seeing this timer being changed within seconds and each timer is set to 700 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds so both together creates uh, almost a second and that is how these keep moving so a bit more about this if you can see here uh, let me just uh, select this frame here and you have a clip content that is how it's clipping off and once I remove this you can see that each of this last digit here comprises of all these digits so I'm just moving the position of this one uh, above and below and that is how you see the timer change so in in this case it's five and in this case I just move it up and it becomes three so on so in every step you just move it uh, one digit up and that is how the timer is created so once the timer is done I just use that timer in this one so this one is a nested uh, interactive component where I have the player turn and also the timer so I just used an instance of this one here and this one as I told you it just starts off with a delay so this one keeps running continuously so once it goes to zero again it comes back to the five second mark and that is how this timer keeps looping and this one is is going to loop uh, within every five seconds so if i show you this one you can see that's 4800 milliseconds plus 200 milliseconds of animation so all together it's five seconds so every five seconds this one keeps looping a timer and our player's turn is done the next one is uh, clicking on the x and o's in each of these grids here so for that case i have a single grid first one is x and the second one is o so based on the player's turn in case the player here selects o this is the component that's going to start with and if you select x this is the component that is 
you want to be on the top. And this is the basic grid cell. You have the empty cell here and on click, you're just moving to this one or changing to this one. And using these grids, I just created this whole grid here. So this one, as I told you is X. So we'll be using empty grids of X in this one. And this one is O, we'll be using the empty grids of O in this one. So that is how these two are created. And then I have both these versions here. So if I select this frame and open it up, you can see that in this case, uh, which is X is on the top and O is on the bottom. So the preference goes to the layer that is on top. So that is why I place X here and O here. And in this case, if you can see O is on the top and X is on the bottom. And that is how these interactions are linked. So in this case, as I told you, X is on the top. That is why here the user gets X as the first chance. And in this case, it is O. This one just keeps looping. If I can show you this one, I have set a delay of uh, five seconds. So every five seconds, this one goes to X chance and this one goes to the O chance. So every five seconds, the user's turns keeps changing. And yeah, I'll be placing this file in the description. So don't worry, you can always go duplicate it and check each and every interaction if you have any doubt in this. So yeah, moving on to the next one, which is the Flappy Bird game. And as you can see uh, here, we need to control the bird in top and bottom motion, which is kind of a gravity moment. And to replicate that, we need a bit of a complicated structure here. It's actually not complicated, but you got to have a interactive component, which has so many variants here. So what I'm doing here is I'll just explain you the bird moment first. So for the bird moment, I'm using this kind of interactive component here, which is nothing but a frame. And inside the frame, you just have this bird image. So with every variant here, the bird is moving down. So like kind of 10 pixels, I just moved it down. You can actually uh, keep it more closer, but that will give a more smoother animation. But the file is going to get heavy and the prototype might be a bit glitchy. So make sure you don't use too many variants. And coming to prototype here. So what I've done is on click of spacebar, I want the bird to go up. So let's take this case here. On click of spacebar, what I'm doing here is you can see I'm animating to this frame, which basically means that on press of spacebar, the bird is animating to a top position. And this is happening in a linear motion. You don't want to set this to any other type of motion because it has to go consistently above. So that is why I have linear set here. And each of this interaction is going to be the same thing. So on click of space, uh, it just goes up to this step. The interaction keeps continuing to all these. And now talking about the gravity part, you don't have gravity in Figma obviously. So to replicate that interaction, what I'm doing is, so once the bird is in this case, I'm using a delay of one millisecond. So as soon as the bird goes up, this one gets activated and it goes to this frame here. So basically that shows that the bird is going down and on press of space, it's going up. So as long as I'm keeping the space bar pressed, it keeps going up, up, up. And once I release it, the delay gets activated and then it keeps going down. So that is how the fake gravity is going to work. And then moving on to the background. So the bird movement is done. So I just have to place this variant onto the frame as you can see here. So that will control the bird's movement. I kept it in the center and then you got to control the foreground, which is nothing but the ground here and then also the background. So the background will move a bit slower and the ground is going to move a bit faster. So as you can see, each of this movement is nothing but an interactive component with a delay. Starting off with this one, this is the background frame. And as you can see, this is a huge image that I just created. So you have all the assets here. So if you want to try it out yourself, make sure that you just download this file and try it out. So I just use that image as you can see here, this one, and this is a night mode. You can also do that. And I've just duplicated it and created multiple images of it and grouped it completely into one group, which is background and placed it inside a frame here. So on the second variant, the frame just moves towards the left. So I kept it somewhere on the center. As I told you, the background has to move a bit slower. And that is why I just moved it till here. So this one is being basically controlled with a delay. So after a delay of one millisecond, it's basically animating for 10 seconds. That is why it's 10,000 millisecond milliseconds, which is the highest possible if I'm not wrong. And then you have the similar uh, kind of an animation with the base that is a foreground. And as you can see, this is just a long ground that I just duplicated and grouped it into one group here, which is ground. And on the second variant, as you can see, I've just moved it towards the left. So basically you have an animation of that moving towards the left. So that is the base and the interaction is pretty much the same. One millisecond of delay and then 10 seconds of animation. And then coming to the pipes here, so the pipes or the obstacles, you just have to create so you have this asset here. You just need to take one like this and duplicate it. And this one, just flip it from the top and just place it like this and just group this one. And you just have to duplicate and place it in different positions, something like this. And that is how I created uh, the pipes here. So if I remove the clip content here, so as you can see here, these are just obstacles that I placed it in random positions like this. And then all I did is in the second variant, I just moved it towards the left. And the animation is pretty much the same. So that is how the animations in these 
interactive components are going to work. This is the intro screen and on click of this, you have the main game screen. Just place the default variants of each of this one onto the frame here. So if you can see here, I have the base layer, I have the pipes, I have the background. So these three will automatically get started after a delay of one millisecond. And that is how you see the game running. As I've showed you in the demo, that's how it's going to work. And finally, if you see this interaction here, after a delay of uh, 10 seconds, you have the game over just to show how the game over interaction is going to look. And finally, moving on to the last one, which is the car racing. So I really loved this one. So in this one, the movement is less and that's why it's going to look much better. So as you can see here, I have the road asset. And also before we move on, uh, the game assets are from this developer here. So you can uh, just pick this up. I've given the credits. You can download it from here as well. So all this will be in the files. Uh, I'll just mention in the description below. So as you can see here, the road here consists of five lanes. So that means the car just needs to move in five different positions. So what you got to do is uh, I'll try to create this one so that it's uh, pretty understandable. So I'll just reduce the height of this frame to something like this. And here we'll create the car moment. So if I just take this car and place it inside this frame here, center line. So what you got to do is since you have five positions, what you have to do is just take a rectangle of full width here and divide this by five. Okay. So divided by five, you have this as an equal part. And all you got to do is just duplicate this. So you have five rectangles created here. So I'll change this to stroke and remove the fill. So now you know that the positions of the car has to be in these five rectangles. So simply just, you know, create this as a component and start creating variants. So since we have five, five positions, you need five variants. So there you go. I have five variants. And in each of this, uh, you'll just align it to the center. So in this variant, it's going to be here. So the car, you have it in five positions. All you got to do is link it using the prototype feature here. So the first one here, just link it to the next one. So here the car is moving from the left to the right. So on key press of right, you want to change this to this variant with an animation of say 300 milliseconds should be enough. And this one to this one, same interaction, key press on right click and do the same for all of these and repeat the opposite one. So here the car is moving from the right to the left. So you got to link this one on key press to the left and so on. Just repeat this. So once you finish doing this, just remove these rectangles. You just have to hide the stroke. That's enough. And that's it. You have created the car movement using these uh, interactions here. That is the same thing I've done here. I just removed the fill of the frame. So if you see the prototype, each of these is interlinked to each other with right and a left key press. So that is how I created the car movement. And then you have the road and the obstacles or the cars here. So this one is going to follow the same interaction that we saw in the Flappy Bird thing. So I'll remove the clip content. And as you can see here, you have this one as a whole complete car and road group. So this one is basically going to move down in the next variant here. So as you can see, I just moved it down and that is going to replicate the animation of the car and the road moving and then you have your car being placed here which is stationary but the movement of the road and the car going down creates the impression that the car is actually moving and uh, on click of start i'm just going to navigate to this one and all the remaining interactions are just normal ones just going to the other screen on click and all so that's how this game is going to work and finally i have placed a game over which basically comes after a delay of 10 seconds just to show that the game is over so yeah that's pretty much about this guys uh, so you can actually create such simple game prototypes before you actually give it to the game developer. And that's it for this video guys. If you found this interesting, make sure that you share this with your friends. A quick note here, thanks for all the love and support that you've shown us on YouTube. And we have just recently started our Instagram page. And as you can see here, we are posting some really interesting and informative design bites. So make sure that you follow us there so that you don't miss out these content. And as always, thanks for watching.